I have your attention, please? Good evening. You're listening to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. We thank you for tuning in and hope you enjoy another exciting episode of our show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. It's Six Man Dean Geronimo, and as always, from NJ to NC, I'm in the studio with my right-hand man, Mark Lee. So, Mark, tell me what's good in your neck of the woods, my brother. Hey, man, we're in a new day and age. That's all I can say. You know, we're dealing with all kinds of stuff. I know y'all are dealing with it up there. Everybody seems to be dealing with it in different ways. On Sunday, uh, actually, I think I got the email on Friday or the call from my boss that we were not having church service on uh, either church that meets at the hey time on this Sunday or it looks like this coming Sunday, and it sounds like they might be going for a couple of weeks without church services as the number keeps going down as to how many people are allowed uh, to be hanging out with each other, you know. At one time, I think we heard a number of 200. Then we were told 100. Then it was 50. And now it seems like today, earlier today, the number has gone down to 10. And we took one of the worst stock market crashes since 1987. I was 25 years old, or depending on when in 87, I might have been 24. So, like I said, things are definitely in a new era. I know that they're in a new era where you are. I mean, New York is supposed to be the city that never sleeps. And, uh, last time I checked, it's kind of hard to not sleep if you got restaurants closing and y'all got restaurants closing and other things happening up there that I'm sure people never thought they would see the day where New York restaurants, L.A. restaurants, and restaurants from around the country were shutting down because the government told them that things were getting a little bit on the rough side. So this is definitely a new day and a new era, and we're just going to see how the uh, population plays out with it and what happens with it in the world. We did have the uh, political debates. I did check that out yesterday, and it's been interesting watching how folks are dealing with it in different ways. Some friends of mine did a dance concert. They went ahead and did that concert over the weekend. I did not make it, but I understand that they streamed it. I had several friends, including some that have been on on our show, like Reese Palmer and um, I believe can can't remember if we had Phil Cook or not. I know I've invited them a couple of times, but definitely some of the elite musicians, they did it at North Star, which of course is a uh, center that Pierce Freeline and, and uh, his mom Nina kind of put together along with some of their other friends to kind of like be a living legacy when Phil was living. And of course, uh, he has passed on, but that center, uh, the North Star Church of the Arts, still goes on and they were doing this thing called um, Got Country in the title. I think it was Country Songbook or something like that. Or it might have been, uh, I'll have to look it up, the exact title to get it and put it on the website. But they had several musicians, including some amazing musicians, that did a concert. I mean, the bassist, Sinclair Palmer, was wearing gloves. They were sanitizing the concert, and they streamed it live uh, to folks who wanted to watch it. So I was watching it from the comfort of my home, and uh, they definitely had a lot of folks out there doing this concert that is uh, trying to highlight some of the roots music and things of that nature. So uh, there, there are some artists that I have invited to be on the show in the past and some artists that have been on the show. So definitely uh, saw some names of folks that I recognize as being friends of mine. So that was interesting. Saw that, like I said, watched the debate, have listened to a couple of Shree's talks. You know, Shree is the guy that does the read-along with the New York Times every Sunday, but he's also been doing these COVID updates on a uh, regular basis. So I uh, think I've joined either two or three of those. So uh, definitely, like I said, it's an interesting time that we are living in right now. How are you holding up there in the New Jersey area and in the prison system? Because I know some folks of mine or friends of mine have been wondering how the prisons were going to even deal with this. Because I mean, you talk about a confined area with just a few people and management and uh, a whole lot of folks in there. So I know that there have been at least a, case, a couple of cases in some prison systems, I believe, up north. But uh, just wondering how y'all are coping with it yourself. If you're asking me personally, the panic is ridiculous. Because <laughs> it's, to me, you know what I'm saying, you, the, you talk about all these people getting infected, all, okay, but it's not, we don't do the same shit when, when any other virus happens. But you give it a name, you tell people, oh, it can be done by this. 
if you remain level headed and stop feeding into the bullshit that they keep selling you, if I can control you, if I can get you scared enough to believe anything I say, we're well, looking what happened. People went out here and bought up all the toilet paper, bought up all this shit, and they said that symptoms last for how long? Up to a week? Okay, so if you do get it, there's a week. But for those with compromised immune system and those who have chronic illnesses that they've dealt with for years, we didn't go buy the fucking store out. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's panicking for no real reason. Well, maybe it is a reason, because some of y'all are dirty and don't wash your damn hands and, and <laughs> go pee and don't wash your hands, take dumps and don't wash your hands, digging up your nose, touching your face, and, and giving everybody high fives, and the germs are just spreading and spreading. So now we got something they can't get rid of. The CDC is recommending men shave their beards. I ain't shaving shit. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. After a while, they go say, put a a pair of scissors to the inside of your leg and stab hard and somebody's going to end up doing it and, and clip their femoral yeah. artery and die out and then there's going to be another uh, you know I mean I just don't I don't feed into the madness like yeah people are getting sick people get sick every day man like this is not I still haven't seen the dead bodies like when y'all had the Ebola uh, people lined up and, and, and these people have died so for it's it's a situation we have to deal with in the prison yep. system. Hey man, we limiting stuff like visitation. You're not go bring your sick ass up in here and cough and then get everybody infected in a confined space because it spreads fast. So right. stuff like visits and, and, and programs will be shut down momentarily until the BS passes. And then once it passes, we go back to normal, just like the rest of the world. If they haven't committed suicide out of fear, you know, but it's just, it's another thing we have to deal with. And people are acting like, oh, woe is me. We're going to all die. It's the chicken little syndrome. You know what I mean? You got all these things like putting out memos about COVID-19 Eventbrite. Nobody, everybody does their joint online. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Like, I mean, it's, I, it's, 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 you got to calm It has just been crazy. Sense, I mean, man. it's... And it's definitely impacting the economy and, and everything else. Like you said, people are going out and buying all kinds of things, buying toilet paper tricks, buying <laughs> foods, buying perishable foods. I heard about somebody that bought one of the hand sanitizer brands, and then I think before they busted him, he turned around and resold it on, uh, well, let's say it was Amazon. So, you know, he was trying to figure out a way to make his hustle. I've got friends that do DoorDash and, I, and stuff like that. <laughs> so, I you know, when people say don't them. come to the restaurant, they're getting a lot more orders, so it is definitely right. impacting folks. Like I said, restaurants, I really feel sorry for the restaurant workers. I mean, they're going to have to have some sort of financial bailout for these folks because, like I said, if you shut down the business, they're not getting paid, and a lot of them don't have benefits in the first place, or they got right. very small benefits. So you've got to come up with some kind of package to help these folks if you're talking about shutting down these restaurants the way they are for a number of weeks. I mean, I think the president came on today and was talking like, this could last to July or August. Of course, we all know that he lies on a regular basis, so it could be he he, part of what you he, said. <laughs> he said he took the test. They were like, so what's the test? And he started stuttering. He's full of shit, man. Like, maybe he has all the toilet paper. You know what I mean? I, I just don't understand how you're going to stutter. And if you did take the test, if you took the test, why can't you tell anybody what the test was? Because you didn't take it, and you're telling a lie. You're out there sweating. Your orange skin has turned red. You look like you're about to explode at any second, but you say, hey, I'm negative. No, your brain is negative, but your ass is positive. <laughs> say positive as you can be, and his brain's over there being negative. And I don't know. I, I was, I'm not going to lie, I was quite shocked when they talked about the sports. And, you know, every time you turn around, something else was being either suspended like the NF, uh, NBA and the uh, – NHL or just being out and out canceled. I mean, I have regularly, I mean, almost like done it on a regular basis, done a bracket. Well, you know, unless they do something weird, like try to hold a tournament like they did with the NIT before the fall and then do the mm -hmm. rest of the tournament in the spring of 2021, which I've heard that theory is floated out that they may do that. But unless they do that or unless they let some of these seniors that did not get a chance to have a uh, 
you know, that shining moment that they talk about in sports, unless they give them a fifth year, which they've also talked about. But, I mean, I was just shocked. Every time you turn around, there's another event that is being, uh, you know, canceled and or postponed. Like I said, I know that right now NBA is suspended, NHL is suspended. The Boston Marathon was uh, put off, I believe they said, until either August or September. I don't remember which of those months, but they definitely put it off and everything. They put off a couple of other events, and then, like I said, some have just been out and out canceled. But, you know, right about now, everybody and their mother would be filling out a bracket as to who they thought was going to be winning the tournament. But that's not happening on 2020. You know what? Oh, boy. (laughs) Just like they got a, a curfew up here in New Jersey, right? They urge people to stay in the house from 8 p.m. to 5 in the morning. So at 5.01 a.m. to 7.59 p.m., if I got it, I can go past this joint around to whoever and however and then go back and, and curfew in. It doesn't make sense. Like, none of this stuff makes sense, man. Well, that's actually, I was listening, and I'm hoping she's going to call us around 8 o'clock, but I was listening to Lippy Roy on Shree's show, and that's one of the things that she brought up was that it's uh, – it's one thing to get a message from the federal level, but then the message that they're passing it on to the state level is giving mixed messages. So you got one state that is telling everybody to go outside and to enjoy the outside, and then you got another state that's telling everybody, you know, stay in your house, work remotely, don't even bother to do exercise on the outside, you know, just kind of like hunker down in the inside of your house. And that's coming from two different states, two different ways, right. because they interpreted the message from the feds a different way. So like I said, you're right. We're getting confused messaging, even on the state level, on the regional level, on all kinds of levels. So you're right. It's just confusing people left and right. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. I did hear the bell ring. Before we get that, I just wanted to bring up this. They Mm -hmm. said the Dow Jones industrial average closed 2,997.10 points lower or 12.9 at 20,188.52. The 30 stock Dow was briefly down more than 3,000 points in the final minute of trading. The S&P 500 dropped 12% to 2,386.13, 2, hitting its lowest level since December 2018, while the NASDAQ composite closed 12.3 lower at 6,904.59 in its worst day ever. So they're saying that that was the worst day ever and everything. So like I said, this guy could suck. People going out doing stuff on the market is definitely impacting things. It says the markets are getting no break with yesterday's historic Fed actions and COVID-19 nominating the world's headline. Frank Caporello, executive director of Instanet, said in a note, while the news continues to worsen and with the price action doing things we've only seen a handful of other times in the last century, let's see, he said it's uh, nearly impossible to keep things in perspective. Says we can change the facts and uh, we can't argue the facts and we're dealing with a much bigger issue than just the economy. So it looks like they're definitely saying that, uh, you know, as long as we get in these kind of people saying this and that, that it's going to continue to tank. So it says he also told the U.S. the U.S. may be heading into a recession. No kidding. The market didn't hear what I wanted to hear. I don't think that they wanted to hear that this was going on. This was going to last until July and August, and now the market does the math. If it lasts until July and August, that means we maybe have a contradiction in the second quarter and the third quarter, and that means recession. That's what a uh, BNY Mellon strategist said earlier today as well. So, like I said, it definitely looks like the economists are trying to brace us for dealing with um, some kind of craziness in terms of what the market is going to do, no matter uh, what the germs do. (laughs) I'm at the point now, man. If I, as long as I can pay my bills, all that other stuff, I don't care about it. We've been in a recession before. We overspend on things that have no relevance to us as a people. We help every other country except our own, and then we cry because we don't have any money. Well, it's our own doggone fault. So you know when it comes to that, and they say like we're in a recession. I'm like so. Stop spending money. That's like telling a, a dope fiend you give him ten dollars and you're like, here, here's some money to go get something to eat, and then he's gonna go get high with it. So when we get money, we give it to other countries, and we talk about it's the, in the interest of diplomacy. 